So folks, it's Wednesday, October 14th, 2015. I'm Earl Garrett, totally missing the Source Awards, and this is DX Daily. First, I got to speak with Ebro recently about the upcoming Circle of Sisters Expo, the largest expo in New York City uniting, motivating, and celebrating women of color. Hip hop will surely have a presence. Here's what he had to say about the panel he'll be a part of. You know, they fight for equal pay, and just, you know, women who have always been fighting for equality to have a good dialogue about the professional workspace. And also just even like some of the images of women in media and you know look some of the music we play on Act 7 some of the images of women on Instagram and social media you know the difference between your private life and your professional life and how to balance both of those things you know because women get judged a lot right um, yeah. because of if they you know look sexy on their private Facebook page or if they have you know uh, certain opinions you know a lot of times that you know isn't something that men have to be as concerned about because you know, we don't get men don't necessarily get a ju get judged on our appearance as much. Okay. Um, so I want to have conversations with women about how they're managing that and dealing with that. And what's really going on out there? We're going to try to have people who are, you know, uh, work in HR, corporations, people who, you know, maybe have uh, social media profiles that are a little risque and how they balance that out. Yeah. You know, just all that down. The Hot 97 host and Apple Music DJ also had this to say about misogyny and hip hop. You know, it's harder, you know, for women to balance. Um, and, and be a part of some of these boys clubs where men, you know, are, are dominate and women don't feel as, you know, whether it's uh, culturally accepted or just, you know, men, you know, are uh, condescending towards them just because of their gender. Don't, don't treat them as equals or treat them as, you know, uh, love interests and not, you know, professional comrades. Got you. Um, so, so I think that that's applicable probably across all corporate lines. Um, and I think also the other thing that makes the music industry uh, even a little bit more, you know, um, hard to, to navigate for women is the fact that a lot of music, no matter the format, has, you know, sexual images of women or the dancing or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, sometimes that bleeds over into the office life, into the business side. And that's hard for women who are just on the business side of the music industry to, you know, make sure that people are treating them with respect. Think you have the point? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Second, I got to speak with some legendary MCs at the How the West Was One concert at the Verizon Wireless Amphitheater Saturday night. Besides spending some time with Scheme, Problem, Flint Major, and even summer time in the LBC Collective Dove Shack at the West Coast Hip Hop Super Bowl, I got some time to speak with Corrupt Young Gotti and the DOC. Here's what Corrupt had to say about his method of choosing collaborations. Well, I learned it from Snoop. You know, Snoop always um, Snoop always stays present with the present times of music and everything like that. And one thing Snoop taught me was that, um, you know, this is about music more than anything. So, you know, I got to stay updated with what's going on as well as keep it G'd up. His first live performance in decades, the DLC spoke about his part in the emergence of the Dallas hip hop scene. Well, the, the, West, the West Coast of Dallas are, it's the same energy is the same you know what i mean really texas and the west coast that's why the ghetto boys and uh ugk and all those boys they feel like that early west coast shit because it's it's the same feeling so bro i'm just blessed you know god decided to allow me the opportunity to do something that was taken away from me that i love doing bro so i'm grateful and i'm thankful you know what I mean? I, I st still got air in my, my voice. is a little different, but I'm still kind of cool with this shit. You know what I mean? So um, I'm just thankful and grateful for it, yeah. Glad to see both veterans at it. You know where to go. Last, the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards had social media on fire following performances, awards, and of course, the ciphers. Kendrick Lamar and Big Sean won three awards. Compton's own to comb Best Hip Hop Video, Lyricist of the Year, and Impact Track. Sean received Best Collabo, Best Club Banger, and People's Champ Award. J. Cole received Album of the Year for 2014 for its Hill Drive. Winning the I Am Hip Hop Award with Scarface himself. Giving his thoughts today will be Features Editor, Andre Grant. Yep. Let us know what you think about the uh, 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards. I mean, listen, you know, the BET Awards are supposed to be our award show, right? Everyone's mad at the Grammys for not judging things correctly, and then you get to the BT Awards and you get to Album of the Year, 
and To Pimp a Butterfly is in the nomination and he doesn't get the award. Is Kendrick Lamar the Leonardo DiCaprio of hip hop right now? Like, can someone give him an album of the year award? Please. Look, I mean, come on, it's BET. They have a history. It's not like the BET award, the BET hip hop awards has given us any moments that even matches anything in the social awards. Like, we all, to this day, we'll never forget the, the South got something to say, or the, you know, the, you know, if you don't want to be all in the videos, like, it's never been a moment. I've never seen a moment. I understand that. But the reason why, you know, you might not see a moment is because of things like this, for example. Uh, there's all, in all of the categories, um, for example, the Hus was there a Hustler Award? Yes. I'm not sure what that means there's at not, all. Is there, a, is there like a rubric or a, a uh, I guess a measurement of Apparently there's a document out there, probably available on the internet, which can tell you what uh, being a great hustler is. I see, I see, have the liquor line, <laughs> how many club appearances. Regardless, I, and this is not a knock to J. Cole's um, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. I actually reviewed that album and I think it's immensely relatable. I actually use the words immensely relatable because I think that that's the case. However, To Pimp a Butterfly is a masterpiece and to not see it get represented the way it should have at the BET Awards is truly, truly troubling. And it's, a, it's ironic considering that, you know, even if you look at To Pimp a, to Pimp a Butterfly, is technically on Metacritic the second highest reviewed album in the history of the site since, uh, I believe since My Beautiful Dark. I mean, we felt strongly about it, right? We yeah. gave it a five out of five. Yeah. And I just, Listen, no knock to J. Cole, of course. But Kendrick Lamar went out of his way to create something really special and to not even have BET acknowledge it in that way is how can we expect the Grammys to? Now when he loses the Grammy Awards to someone else, whomever that person may be, um, what are we gonna say? Well, the BET Awards didn't give it to him either. And to wrap this up, thanks Andre for coming through. No doubt. Let us know what you think about the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards in the comment section. And these are today's most interesting hip hop headlines. For more music and news, hit up hiphopdx.com.